To use the activated charcoal cleansing oil, before every use, make sure that you shake it really well. Sometimes the charcoal can settle down here at the bottom if it's been a while since you used it or once you get it right out of shipping. You wanna go ahead and um, in the dropper, you wanna take one dropper full to begin with. I like to apply it to my non-dominant hand or you can apply it directly to the skin. It's entirely up to you. Try to start with about a quarter size amount. I like to warm it in the hands and then you're gonna apply it to your skin. Very gently and the initial process is just making sure that you get your skin gently coated all over the face, on the throat, and even on the decollete, especially if you get um, breakouts in those areas. Then just massage it into the skin for about one to three minutes. You wanna pay particular attention to areas that you have a little bit more congestion in. Usually it's in the chin area or in the T-zone area. Could even be on the cheeks. Try not to use too much physical pressure to push it into the skin. We're just trying to gently cleanse the skin. Be gentle in areas that you have um, any type of acne or breakouts going on. If it feels more comfortable to apply it to a facial pad and then to press and gently move into the skin if this feels softer. We don't wanna cause any additional redness or inflammation or any harm to the skin. There's no real wrong or right way to do it. Um, just make sure that you're being gentle with your skin. You're not tugging or pulling on the skin at all. And you get into all of those areas, especially the areas that you have congestion and breakouts in. Another area that I like to target and focus in when I'm oil cleansing is right here along the lip line. A lot of the times we can get those bumpies and some congestion in there from lip oils or um, lip makeup products. So you can go ahead and work that in. And then to remove the product, you're gonna take your facial pad or you can use a soft facial cloth Whatever is more comfortable for you. I like to wring out the rag or the facial pad just enough to where it still has water in it. And then use very warm but not hot or steaming water. And then remove it in upward and outward strokes. And then rinse and wring out your cloth as often as needed. In areas that you have some more breakouts in that may be painful, you can just take your facial pad and press and hold it into the skin. I really like the Bamboo Earth reusable facial um, pads. They're dual, they're ply, so you have both sides to work with. Once one side gets too much oil on it, just flip it over and keep moving on. And if you have areas that you're more porous or that you have more texture to, just go over those areas a few more times. Again, being gentle. Once the cleansing process is done, the skin should feel moist and supple, but it shouldn't have any oil or grease left on the skin. Some of the common problems that we hear about removing the activated charcoal cleansing oil is that the skin will either still feel too oily or that there'll be some charcoal left over in the pores. So one of the things that I suggest is using a washcloth that is still gentle but has a little bit more texture to it. These are very soft um, and smooth. They may not take, they may not grip and take all of that off of your skin. And then also making sure that you're taking your time, removing it slowly. In areas that you may have some painful acne in, you can press, gently press to remove the oil. So it's very important when you're using any of the cleansing oils to ensure that you're not actually touching the pipette on the dropper. You wanna make sure, especially for blemish prone skins that you're reducing on, reducing back the spread of bacteria as well as cross contamination. So when you're ap applying either to the skin, don't let the pipette touch the skin or with the hands, try not to grab and pull the rest of the oil down off of the pipette. I also highly encourage you to store your products in a cool, or room temperature and darker area.
So the rose water cleanser is really easy to use. Before each use, please make sure that you shake it every time. We don't use any binders or fillers or anything in our products. We want to make sure that we shake them um, prior to. Um, you can use either our reusable facial pads. These are two ply and they're 100% organic cotton. Or you can use a cotton round or a cotton ball, whichever is your preference, or a facial washcloth, something that's soft and smooth that can be used on the skin. Um, I like to go ahead and take it directly from the bottle. You can place it on top. I'm going to turn it over and allow it to get onto the pad. I normally do, um, you know, about two to three soaks is the best way to explain it. You want it to have enough product on the pad where it does soak through on the other side. You're going to use one side for most of your face and then use the other side for the rest of the face. So be sure to cleanse uh, your face, your throat, and your decollete. These areas are often overlooked and these are areas that we often have um, signs of premature aging sooner in life. You're going to apply it by swiping it in upward and outward motions on the skin. I like to use the first side of the pad for the decollete as well as my throat up to the jawline. And then using the other side of the pad for the rest of the face. If you have um, looser skin or if you have a little bit of loss of collagen or elastin in the skin, you can brace the skin. We want to avoid any type of tugging or pulling. If you have more sensitive skin, you can do what I call as a press and bounce where you're just pressing and moving it across the skin. This is also beneficial if you have um, breakouts or any type of wounds on the skin. Once you've already applied it to the skin, we suggest that you rinse and remove the rose water cleanser using tempid water. Some people don't rinse the rose water cleanser off. The preference is entirely up to you. However, we encourage you to remove it. One of the reasons why we suggest that you remove the rose water cleanser is so then that way it's prepped and ready to go for the next step um, and you don't leave any um, film or residue on the skin. And that's it. You can also remove the rose water cleanser by just rinsing and splashing the skin with water if you don't want to use a facial pad or a facial washcloth to remove it. So some of the common problems that we hear about the rose water cleanser is, do I actually need to remove this? And the answer is, it's entirely up to you. We highly encourage you to remove the rose water cleanser after using it. It can help remove any excess bacteria or sebum or anything else left over on the skin. It also makes sure that there's no film left on the skin at, any, at all, usually due to human error just it's just what happens. Um, but if you feel comfortable and if your skin enjoys it, you can leave the rose water cleanser on your skin before moving on to your next step. One of the other problems that we get asked a lot about the rose water cleanser is, what is this actually doing for my skin? Is it cleansing at all? And the answer is yes. Just in case if there's anything left over or residual oil from your oil cleanser, the rose water cleanser will ensure that all that grime and bacteria is gone from the day. And if not, it's going to help ensure that all the water-based impurities from your skin are gone. The Dead Sea Mud Mask, you want to use about a dime-sized amount. I like to use a little spatula. You can either apply this directly to the skin, um, first by putting it in your hands, or if you have more blemishes or cystic acne that may be painful, you can also dispense it on a small plate and then apply it with a fan brush. And then I was gonna show both ways on both sides of my skin. So once you have your amount that you're dispensed on, I suggest that you um, wet or dampen the skin. You can use it with filtered water or you can use our Intense Hydration Facial Mist. Those are really great options. Get a little bit of the product on your hand. Go ahead and wet and move it. You wanna add just a thin, even layer onto the skin. If you have more acne or if you have um, any painful blemishes, this is also a great one that you can apply with a facial um, brush. You wanna apply the product in a really thin consistency in upward outward motions all over the skin. You could also use this as a spot treatment as well. So if you only have a few blemishes and a couple spots, just kind of put it on there where it may be at. 
or it can be used anywhere on the face. Just want to be sure that you don't get it too far into the eye area. Our eye skin is really delicate. Those that have aging concerns on their throat or on their decollete, you don't have to skip it out. The dime size amount is great if you're going to use this mask just on your face, but you can increase it to using about a quarter size amount. I have it like here on this little plate. And for those of you that are concerned with fine lines or wrinkles and aging on the throat and neck area, jawline and decollete, you can use this mask in all of those areas as well. It's going to increase it's going to increase the stimulation um, and circulation to the skin. So it may bring some mild redness or erythema. All right, so then once you have it applied to the skin, again, you want to apply it in a very thin application in upward, outward motions, and then allow, allow the mask to dry or set. It should take about five to 10 minutes. And then you and I have a break until it actually starts to dry, unless you want to keep me have me keep talking. When it starts to dry, it will start getting lighter in color, won't be as dark. It normally takes five to 10 minutes for the mask to completely finish drying. Don't leave the mask on any longer than the 10 minutes though, or it can start pulling out additional oils from the skin and we don't want to have increase any oil production. We just want to help maintain and balance your skin. All right, so once the mask is all dry, you can see I applied it too thick there, that's okay. But it's dry everywhere else on the skin. You're just gonna take a facial pad or some type of facial washcloth and I like to re-moisten and re-wet the mask. That way there's less tugging and pulling when you remove it, and then it wipes off much more cleanly. This mask also offers a gentle exfoliation while you're applying it and while you're removing it because it has that stony, kind of slightly gritty feel to it. And then you can see in the areas that the mask is at, there'll be a, what's called mild erythema or some redness, some pinkiness to the skin. And that's from that increase of circulation, this, that increase of blood flow um, to the skin. When you're removing your mask, I, um, I recommend just removing it in upward and outward motions. Rule of thumb, we never really want to pull down or drag on the skin. We want to always make sure that we're encouraging it to remain youthful and upright. And that's it. So some of the common concerns that people will have with the Dead Sea Mud Mask is that it feels really thick and it's difficult to apply. Um, the skin should be moist or damp prior to applying it, and that will help thin out the mask and make it easier to um, apply in upward, outward motions in a thin, even layer across the skin. Another common objective that we get for the Dead Sea Mud Mask is that it dries out. So when, in between uses of using the mask, we suggest making sure that the lid is on correctly and the lid is tight um, and to reduce its air exposure so it will stay fresh and ready to apply. In case your Dead Sea Mud Mask does dry, it's okay. There's no need to fear. You can add just a little bit of filtered water or mist it a few times with our Intense Hydration Facial Mist to revive the mask. Some people will say that the mask is a little overstimulating. The Dead Sea Mud Mask is overstimulating and um, feels a little tingly. That's completely normal. There's a lot of minerals and magnesium and salts in the Dead Sea Mud Mask, and that's increasing the circulation to the skin very quickly which may be uncomfortable for some people. Our Dead Sea Mud Mask has a really deep, earthy, um, and mud aroma to it. There it also contains tea tree essential oil and lavender essential oil, so you may pick up on some floral notes as well as some of more of astringent notes to it. To apply the rosemary toner, first gently shake the product before each use. You can use either our reusable facial pads. These are wonderful, they're two ply. Or you can use any type of basic cotton round or cotton ball, your preference. After you've shaken the product, apply it to your um, cotton pad. 
I like to do about three dips. And then you're just going to apply it to the skin. Please don't skip the decollete or the throat. Those are common areas that we can have um, aging or premature aging. And you're just going to swipe the product on the skin in upward motions. If your skin is a bit more sensitive, you can even press and push it into the skin. Be sure to get all areas of the skin. There's no need to remove this product. Leave it on the skin. So when you're applying the rosemary toner, it should feel nice and cool to the skin. It has that slight astringent smell to it. Um, it's very lovely and a little back of the rosemary you can smell onto it. Um, it shouldn't sting. It shouldn't hurt. You shouldn't have any type of pain or irritation when applying it to the skin. Some of the common problems that we hear about the rosemary toner is that it has a very unique aroma. The rosemary toner it has apple cider vinegar, alcohol-free witch hazel, and those have a little bit more of an astringent and stronger aroma that it takes a while to get used to if you aren't used to natural products, although many of our customers find it delightful. The rosemary toner shouldn't have any sensations on the skin. If you do feel tingling, it may mean that your skin barrier is compromised, so please reach out to us. We're happy to help. Another common problem we hear about the rosemary toner is, should we rinse this off? And the answer is no. Allow the product to dry naturally to the skin before moving on to the next step in your routine. The rosemary toner sometimes can be cloudy, and there's no need to worry. It has raw, organic apple cider vinegar in it, and those little wispies and the cloudiness is what we call the mother. It's actually the host, and it has all of those great enzymes that make this product so wonderful for your skin. It's very easy to use the Intense Hydration Facial Mist. Make sure you gently shake prior to each application, and then you're just going to mist your skin. Don't skip on your decollete in your throat, and three to five mist is pretty good to get all over most areas. If you have dehydrated skin, we suggest that you saturate the skin before applying your moisturizer. And then once you have the mist on, immediately follow with your favorite serum and your moisturizer. Some of the common problems we hear about the Intense Hydration Facial Mist is how much do I use? And we suggest that you use three to five mists. Please don't skip your decollete or your throat. If you have more dehydrated skin, then we suggest saturating your skin so you may need some more mist and then follow immediately with your serum or your moisturizer. We do not suggest leaving letting the Intense Hydration Facial Mist dry on your skin. Follow immediately with your serum or your moisturizer of choice. And when it goes onto the skin, it's going to feel nice and cool and refreshing and calming. It's very beautiful on the skin. To use the Intense Hydration Cactus Concentrate, first we highly suggest that you mist your skin with the Intense Hydration Facial Mist or filtered water. Be sure not to skip your decollete or throat. I have dehydrated skin, so I, we suggest you have dehydrated skin to generously saturate your skin. The Intense Hydration Cactus Concentrate, it comes with this little spatula. It helps reduce cross-contamination in your product. Dispense just a little bit. A little goes a long way. When you apply it to your hands, go ahead and um, emulsify the product to make sure that it becomes nice and smooth and then press it into the skin. It's very um, fast absorbing and it's smooth on the skin. It feels very cool and refreshing. If you use too much, don't have any fear. Just re-mist yourself with the Intense Hydration Facial Mist. Or you can blot the skin with tissue. Don't rub, just blot. Pick up the excess that you, um, you've used. And then next time, just use a little less. That's it. The Intense Hydration Cactus Concentrate has like a really great rainforesty kind of green tropical scent to it. And some customers, um, if you're new to natural products, they may not enjoy the aroma, although most of our customers really do. It has really wonderful skin nourishing benefits that so we hope that you continue to use the product as well and hopefully you'll enjoy it too. 
So one of the common problems is using too much of the intense hydration cactus concentrate. That will um, make it feel too oily or too greasy on the skin. Using a little goes a very long way. The Intense Hydration Cactus Concentrate is a pressed serum, so it's very smooth and it um, breaks down or it melts very easy as an oil. Um, once the product comes to you during shipping, because we don't use any stabilizers or preservatives or fillers in any of our products, it's just raw, organic, and natural ingredients, it may melt to you during transition. When it melts down, it could have little kind of beads in it where the oils and the butters separate. But have no fear, it's still good. You can totally use it. You just need to remelt the product down. Um, make sure every last bead is melted down and then pop it back in the refrigerator so that it can re-solidify.